Welcome to you all to this worship service. We welcome you whether you are online or if you paddled your way here this morning. We are glad that you are here. This is a communion day, for, so for those viewing online, gather your crackers or toast or juice or coffee or water and join in with our table blessing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Children, please feel free to go with Miss Aubrey to Sunday school, and we will welcome you back when it comes time for communion. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. God be with you. Come, listen to the one who speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Come, see the one who shines forth in the perfection of beauty. Some bring thanksgiving, the sacrifice that honors the one who shows the salvation of God. You may be seated. Every week, as we worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we do not always live as we are called. In this time of confession, this time of opening our hearts, let us remember that God is merciful and just, eager to offer grace and love. Let us pray first together and then in silence. God of truth, we know we fall far short of your expectations for us. Sometimes we fail even our own self-expectations. We wander away from you in our daily, daily routines. We ignore your commands and in apathy turn our backs on those who are suffering. Forgive our short-sighted vision, our constant focus on ourselves, 
and our discounting of future generations in our decision-making. Help us to deepen our connections with you through prayer, praise, and scripture, and with others through affirming supportive relationships. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all grace. Amen. Hear the good news. We are forgiven and we are free to go out in the world and show the graciousness and lovingness of Christ. Alleluia. Amen. And now as a forgiven people, let us stand and wave the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Good morning. Welcome to Second Congregational First Presbyterian Church, where we work to energize downtown Rockford and beyond with God's grace. My name is Phil Davidson, and I am humbled and honored to serve this church as moderator. Next Sunday, August 14th, is going to be a busy one. Backpacks are important at any age. We know that. So bring your backpacks to church and join us as we celebrate our annual blessings of the backpacks during worship. We will bless them and all of our students going back to school. And then... It's a family outing to Summerfield Zoo in Belvedere at 1230. As you know, the family Christian education team has really been working hard to support our children in learning the skills of stewardship and generosity, collecting supplies for the zoo. It's the only zoo in northern Illinois, and it has a wide range of animals. Crocodiles, lemurs, white leopards, oh my, and many others. Bring your donation to the zoo and check the bulletin for details for supplies that are needed and how do you be able to feed the baby goats and more. The Love Rockford quarterly event will take place on Saturday, September 10th at Court Street Methodist. There will be a clothing room component, so your gently used clothing will be much appreciated. You can drop off items at Court Street or in our church office, and bags should be clearly marked for Love Rockford. And if you have any questions, contact Darlene Riddle. And for more summer fun, it's the annual church picnic coming up. Sunday, August 21st, believe it or not, that's only two weeks away, right after church at the Anna Page Park Shelter. And, of course, this is sponsored by the hardworking Deacons Fellowship Team. All food is provided, including brats and hot dogs and salads and desserts. And our own Up North 4 
will be singing to us. And be part of the team preparing lunches for our neighborhood friends at the Jubilee Soup Kitchen at 10 a.m. on Saturday, August 27th at the Jubilee Center. If you would like to participate, please let Gene Harrow know. And finally, today is National Raspberries and Cream Day. I think we talked about raspberries last week, too. And tomorrow is International Cat Day. So why don't you feed that finicky cat some raspberries and cream tomorrow, and they'll be your best buddy for life. Thank you. Jordan is at flood stage all through the harvest. As soon as the priest's feet touch the water's edge, the water from upstream stops flowing. So that the people would cross over opposite to Jordan and Jericho. The priest who carried the ark was firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while the whole nation passed. They took that step of faith. your past you must be as done all that we need to be as one take command to take control from out of our hands give to him your love and praise from deep within your feet shiver till your faith swims over to make you strong, protect you and keep you for Christ your whole life long. God and Son, the Holy Spirit three in one. Turn our eyes to consecrate and hold.
Our scripture lesson for today is the second reading from the Revised Lectionary. It is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. How would you feel to lose your job or your car because you follow Jesus? How would you feel to lose the approval of your friends? This is the kind of loss is what the audience of Hebrews faced. They needed to be reminded that Jesus is the one that can meet their needs and represent them before God. They needed to hear the dangers of drifting away from the faith. As you hear this passage, allow the writer of Hebrews to motivate you as he did the early church, to look to Jesus, the prefector of our faith. Hear now the words of the Lord. Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed their faith. By faith, we understand that the universe has been created by a word from God so that the visible came into existence from the invisible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived in the land he had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. He was looking forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect, and builder is God. By faith, Sarah received the ability to have a child, though she herself was barren and the past the age for having children, because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man, and they were as many as the stars in the sky and countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. All these people died in faith without receiving the promises, but they saw the promises from a distance and welcomed them. They confessed that they were strangers and immigrants on earth. People who say this kind of thing make it clear that they are looking for a homeland. If they had been thinking about the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return to it. But at this point in time, They are longing for a better country. This is the heavenly one. Therefore, God isn't ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Eleanor? Morning, second first. That has a good sound. It's been a good merger for all. Agree? I'm proud to be a member here, and I wanted to tell you the circuitous route it took to get here. I was born and raised in Winnipeg, Canada. It was all good in my childhood, lots of ice skating, tobogganing, and playing in six to eight feet of snow. And because Canada is a bilingual country, learning to speak French. We attended a UCC church, which is a little different from the one we are in now. Over a hundred years ago, the Methodist, Congregational, and Presbyterian churches merged to form the United Church of Canada, the UCC. And it was there for me. After a job transfer to Chicago, the family attended a neighborhood church, Foster Park Baptist, which is the liberal wing of the Baptist Church, and was the only Protestant church in the very Irish Catholic neighborhood where I lived. But it was there for me. 
Another move 15 years later was a culture shock from Chicago to Rochelle, Illinois. I went to another Baptist church, which was way different from the one in Chicago. The minister worked it into his sermon that single parents were not welcome there. They were not there for me. We then attended the Presbyterian Church in Rochelle while I raised my daughter. Years later, I moved to Rockford and planned on attending First Presbyterian, although the Sunday I went there, I had the wrong time. So I walked over to this building, and the service was just starting. And I ended up joining 40 years ago. And imagine, the most amazing thing happened. Just imagine, all the Presbyterians came over here. That was wonderful. It's been a wonderful merger, and it was there for me. A church has always been part of my life that I have had times of questioning, too, in defining faith, believing in spite of counter-evidence, belief when without reference to evidence, belief when no evidence, when reason has exceeded its limits, trust. Religion is not based on logic or reasoning, but instead belief. And this church has been there for me. After a remarriage and living 15 years in Door County, Wisconsin, where we attended a very small, charming Methodist church on the shores of Lake Michigan in the summer, but it closed in the winter. The Methodist minister from Sturgeon Bay did double duty in the summer. But we lived very far north on the peninsula and so attended a close Lutheran church in the winter. Both of those churches were there for me. Even throughout my travels, the church has been there for me. I've been privileged to witness the grandeur of Westminster Abbey, Salisbury Cathedral, a Buddhist temple in Hong Kong, and a humble chapel with a dirt floor outside of Playa de Karma, Mexico. Most memorable was a privately owned small chapel that was donated for one year to the Houston, Texas Art Center. And inside were three benches and a large screen of the night sky. Playing continuously were sounds from space, which was provided by NASA. It was incredible to hear. Moving back to Illinois to facilitate my late husband's health care, I moved into a small house I bought 38 years ago for my daughter and I. This church has always been there for me, and it is for all of you, too. Ministers come and go, but the congregation is always here. Not you, Becky. <laughs> I believe religion give our, gives our lives purpose and meaning. This church is my home, and I've been honored to serve on many boards and chaired several and I even served as the first woman deacon of this church. So here I am, 40 years later, in the church I love and the little house I love. Although I am no longer ice skating, tobogganing, and playing in lots of snow, I am still learning and speaking French. Throughout my life, the church has always been there for me. I am proud to be here for this church during this transitional time that we are in. And one last thing, as Phil usually reminds us, 
The fair trade store is my mission now. And by the way, it is open today after church. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me this time in front of all of you.
Welcome back to our children. I am so glad that you are back with us for communion. We gather around the table in places far and near, eating sourdough, rye, tortillas, crackers, wafers, coffee cake, and Wonder Bread. This is the body of Christ. Drinking the wine or the juice from handmade chalices and silver goblets or golden spoons, cups with straws or tippy cups. This is the blood of Christ. The bread and the cup unites us with all who would follow Jesus. This meal reaches back through the centuries. This table reaches around the world into our communion in community and into our homes and into those that we will spread the meal with after church. This is the blessed meal of Christ. Let us eat and drink with joy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. It is a right and a privilege and a joy to praise you, O God, because you made life, the universe, this earth, the flowers we love to water in the summer, and the berries we eat like candy. You made the dogs we walk in the morning and the cats that sit on our laps even when it's hot. You made us, men and women, tall and short, fat and thin, lovable and flawed. You praise, we praise you for all your creation this day. And so in praise and with great thanks, we join our voices to those of the heavenly host who sing to your glory, singing... Blessed, O God, as is Jesus, our Christ, who invited all of us carrying heavy burdens to come to him. He bore our burdens, he healed us, and he saved us. He invited us to his table where we practice for the heavenly banquet that awaits us all. And now, O God, we pray for your spirit. We pray that your spirit will descend upon our hearts and on these gifts of bread and cup to transform them from their everyday use into a sacred meal. By your spirit, may our hunger and thirst be sated, and may we be nourished to go out into the world to bear the burdens of others. For so much we offer with grateful hearts, and following the words of Jesus, we offer together the prayer that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, as he gathered with his disciples in that upper room, Jesus took the bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. And in the same manner after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he poured it out. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink, do this in remembrance of me. 
the bread and the cup, the meal of our Lord. Come and be sated. Let us pray. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. And we are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid in our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, and love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen.
from where you, from where your treasure is there your heart will be also let our hearts direct the use of our resources our time and our talents may our generosity meet god's abundance in attending to the needs and hopes of our community we will now receive today's offering your mind felt at ease, how long since your heart knew no burden, and you call him your friend, how long has it been since you knew that he cared for you, how long has it been since you never Let us pray. Holy One, as you are faithful to us, may we be faithful to you, faithful with our time and energy, faithful with our possessions and wealth. Receive these gifts by your grace. Multiply and use them through the power of the Holy Spirit to make real your reign of love, justice, and peace in our world. Amen. and 
As we go out into the world this week, let us remember the blessings that we have received. Let us feed those as we have been fed. Let us forgive as we have been forgiven. And let us love as we have been loved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.